Okay guys, this is a quick video about the number 24. If you've seen some of my other videos, um, I have been talking about the number 24 um, since before Christmas Eve. Um, I did think something was going to happen on uh, Christmas Eve, like disaster wise, but nothing like that happened. Um, the only thing that did happen was the uh, UN condemning the Israeli settlements. That didn't happen on the 24th in the UK or in the United States. Um, however, in Israel, it was on the 24th, so um, I guess that was a significant date after all. Um, my my next um, 24th is, is January, basically. Um, since, I've, since I discovered the 24th um, inserted in media and stuff like that, I've been just keeping an eye out um, for anything that is 24 or 2 and 4, um, and things have been happening on these on these dates um although on other dates there's been significant things happening um the 24th has kind of been a little bit of a a kick in the face for for most of us um let's start with the 24th of january um lots of things happened but my my focus is on like the political side of things happening um so we've got the supreme court of the united kingdom ruling that the government of the united kingdom may not begin the formal brexit process until parliament votes in approval of the move um the israeli settlement um after the un condemned israel um for the israeli settlements um israel approves the construction of 2500 more new settlement homes in the west bank um in violation of the in violation of the un um that is obviously to do with Donald Trump and him being inaugurated as president um, and uh, people thinking that, you know, things are going to take a, a sharp turn, uh, which they pretty much have. Um, then you've got the Syrian peace process um, where Russia, Turkey and Iran um, agreed to monitor the and enforce the fragile ceasefire in the Syrian civil war. Um, obviously that stands against the UK, the United Kingdom and whoever else was involved trying to uh, get involved in, in, in Syria. Um, and then you've got um, President Donald Trump. I hate calling him the president, but that's just what I have to do. Um, president Donald Trump signs the documents approving the construction of both the Keystone XL and the Kota Access Pipelines. Um, a lot of you may know, some of you may not know them about these pipelines they're pipelines for oil basically um and they've become they've come under a lot of scrutiny um and protests from uh environmentalists and and the uh native americans um due to the fact that um it could it could it has a high potential to cause contamination of uh, the water supply um this is not a small water supply where it's just like a few people getting into the water supply this is the water supply for over two million Americans. Um, in their own safety assessment report, they have said that um, leaks are inevitable. Basically, pipes leak. That's what happens, and there could be quite a few leaks in the in the years to come after this, or during the construction, or after the construction. I don't know. There is a, a rumor going around that the um, companies involved in these pipelines have requested to use thinner steel um which when using a pipeline for oil i don't know why you'd request to use thinner steel maybe it's easier to manipulate however of course it's going to cause you know more potential for 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 leaks um that's that all happened on the 24th of, of january um so i've been keeping an eye um the next obviously this is the Dakota Access pipelines with the environmental concerns and uh, you can look that up on Wikipedia I'm not going to go into that too much uh, the Keystone Access the same thing you can look that up on, on Wikipedia um, as you can see there what I was talking about the largest reserves of fresh water in the world the uh, I don't know how to say it but I'm going to attempt the Ogala Ogalala <laughs> aquifer spans 8 states and provides drink of water for 2 million people um, so that's not a small number of people that would be affected if these pipelines were to were to burst or uh, contaminate the fresh water supply. Um, so keeping in line with the uh, 24 or 2 and 4, um, I'm now looking at the 4th of February, which has just passed. 
um, you've got the uh, the US immigration suspension um, of Donald Trump's executive order um, what is scary about that not just the the whole you know you can't come into our country even though all Americans are immigrants and the only real people that should be making any complaints about immigration is the Native Americans um, the reason they're called Native Americans is because they are native to the country and everyone else is immigration or immigrants so um, when people are like oh but they're immigrants and stuff like that I just don't understand because clearly they don't understand the history of America and the history of the world in general immigration is, is part of what makes the world great we're moving from one place to another and and trying to uh, increase that local local place um local places you know population agriculture economy um but you know people will wake up soon enough i'm pretty sure the scary thing as i was saying about this this uh, rejection or this uh this stay or suspension of this order is what trump said afterwards um which is that if there was an attack on America, that Judge James Robart would be responsible. Um, this says to me that there is something not quite right about all of this. Um, Donald Trump is a businessman. Now, a lot of people think he's stupid because of the things he says on Twitter. Um, and that would... <laughs> I, I would think that he was stupid um, if I didn't know better. Um Trump is not stupid. You don't become a billionaire businessman by being stupid. Um, you take risks, you make deals, and uh, you plot, basically. If Donald Trump really wants Americans on his side for, um, you know, immigration bans and the war from Mexico and, you know, supporting any, any wars or anything that he might want to get involved in, he's going to have to have a reason. Much like 9-11, um, they couldn't just go into um, Iraq and take over that wouldn't be accepted by the american people and the rest of the world um rather what you need is a catalyst so for me 9 11 the planes flying into the twin tower we've all heard about conspiracies some people don't believe it some people do believe it what is clear is that 9 11 did lead to the invasion of iraq and we call it an invasion because that's exactly what it was um after the planes crashed in um, America was straight in there not just America don't get me wrong obviously the allies uh, followed in as well um, they've got you know chances to uh, increase their reputation uh, with America not only that but also to gain access to some of the lucrative deals that were then created um, once uh, Saddam Hussein was 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 gone um, the main cause of that is Saddam want Saddam sorry wanted to sell oil in a different currency other than US dollars um, and also I believe there was something about him blocking um, oil being exported uh, from the country um, considering how important oil is and how much um, every country has sought after oil so so viciously and voraciously it's no surprise that when Saddam did that it was it was like a declaration of war um, and in order to to gain access to those uh, to that oil um they had to they had to invade basically um Saddam tried to set fire to all the oil wells and I think he he managed to set fire to quite a few of them but not all um but that didn't stop anything so here we are again um with uh, another potential situation um this time not surrounding oil but surrounding uh, immigration and security the the whole Bible prophecy of when they're saying peace and security, sudden destruction comes upon them, is right there. It's not. It's not going away. Um, more than ever now, I'm hearing about peace and security, peace and security, 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 security. Um, none of us are secure in any of our daily lives. Um, terrorism has become a commonplace, um, and unfortunately, has been associated with certain peoples or religions when anybody can be a terrorist at the end of the day anything that causes someone to be afraid or terrified would be an act of terrorism um shooting people in a church shooting people in the club is terrorism but because it's not done by you know islamists or or people of the culture that they're attacking 
they're not labelled as such. Um, which is which is disappointing um, to see to see, but you know not unexpected. Um, the other thing for me is uh, very quickly because it's going into like ten fifteen minutes now. Um, is that the twenty fourth? Not twenty fourth. Sorry, the fourth second of April um, is another twenty four that I'm I'm looking out for. This one is key for me because it's not just twenty four in a month. Say twenty four of March or twenty four of February. Um, this is the the two and the four, Look, much like this day, which is the, the four and the two. This one's going to be the two and the four. So on April the second, I'm expecting something to happen, um, which is kind of not convenient. Is not the word I want to use, but it seems to fall in line because um, I live here in the UK, and um, Theresa May, our Prime Minister, wants the uh, finalization of the well not the finalization but the actual um triggering of the article 50 which um is what you need to do to leave the eu to, 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 to leave the eu she wants that done by the 31st of march um so two days later um on the 2nd of april um i'm looking i'm looking out for her stuff um donald trump's also supposed to make a state visit to the uk and um, we've had a lot of opposition over here to him to him actually doing that um, considering the international ban however now that's been blocked um, things will probably still go ahead um, my worry is that uh, uh, something <laughs> something like uh, London has fallen could take place on that day with an American president coming to the UK um, with so many people hating him and, and we have like our our London is is full of, of Muslims and you know people of different cultures from around the world um who also we all we all seem to get along here at least the people of culture do um what the you know high-end other classes think i don't care to be honest um but what i do know is that the potential for for catastrophe is is increasing and is getting worse you know you've got donald trump attacking North Korea, Iran, China, Australia, Canada, Mexico, any news outlets that don't, you know, report or publish in a positive light for Donald Trump is fake news. Um, and for me personally, I, I, I think that Mr. Trump is uh, definitely a catalyst to, to the end times um, or, or to, to a lot of devastation whether that's going to go on for the next four years i don't know we're in 2017 now apparently in 2020 there's going to be um, an asteroid which could potentially hit the earth um there are over a hundred scientists um trying to raise awareness of this um there's supposed to be some sort of space launch um they're calling it a test to see if they could like push a, a, an incoming asteroid off its course um, why this test is happening at that time, I don't know. Another coincidence, but basically, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. This is this is the world, as as we've been shown, um, and uh, as you can see, we've got the United States over here. This is in the west. And the rest of the world kind of over here. Now, most of this part of the world is, well, hates America. Let's, let's, let's just put it as it is. Um, you've also got the Europe side of things, except for the UK because of that special relationship. You've got the Europe side of things. They're also not really enjoying the new uh, Trump administration. So what comes out of that, I don't know. But hopefully, guys, um, we'll say you hope for nothing to happen, but you prepare for the worst. So look out for uh, the 2nd of April, and um, I'll be doing the same.